Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So today, as you all know that this is the new beginning of a new week. So I have brought to you the current affairs of the weekend as well as of Monday. So let's begin the current affairs. But before that, let me tell you that we have launched the live classes for RBI SEBI and NABAD courses. So uh, in the last week, in one of my videos, one student was asking me about the ESI live. So let me inform you that ESI live sessions will be taken by Anut sir and the classes will start from 15th July. And uh, the complete ARD course will be taken by Suraj sir and the classes have already started. As you can see, the timetable of all the live classes is in front of you so take a thorough look of the timetable select which course you are opting for and which classes you have to attend and guys listen to me carefully live classes ka apna alag maza hai live classes mein first of all you have the mentor with you so if you have any concept that you are not understanding you can resolve that doubt then and there itself secondly uh, when you are in your live class so there, uh, not only your own doubts, but the doubts of the other students also help you in developing the better understanding of the concept and the class is in itself a wholesome venture for you all. So why not try attending one class of uh, the live session of the courses if you have already enrolled in the course. So that is all about the live classes. One more information for all of you that this is our mobile app. You can download it from the Play Store. We have many more features on the application, including the live classes. So you can attend the live classes through your mobile application by traveling or uh, for those who are working students. Now, guys, also let me inform you that these are the three channels through which you can connect with us. So this is our main website. Besides this, we have discussions. Dot dot in okay so here you can post your queries and we directly try to resolve them besides these uh informations one more and the last one is that the pdf of th this session is already there on the telegram channel so download the pdf keep it beside you and then try to understand what i teach you now that was all let's begin with the question so your long wait is over now so the very first question is uh, New Space India Limited has successfully launched GSAT 24 communication satellite for direct to home service provider Tata Play, which was earlier the Tata Sky. So, on which rocket was the satellite launched? So, guys, it was launched on the French rocket. So, the rocket is Arian Space. Oh, sorry. Arian Fifth, which is developed by a French company named as Arian Space. On this rocket, this satellite, which is basically a communication satellite that will provide direct to home services. And remember that this particular satellite has been launched for a particular company that is Tata Play. Another important fact that you need to know and remember at the same time that is the new Space India Limited has launched this satellite. So can any one of you tell me that in which year did ISRO establish this organization to commercialize the space services in it? This is your question. Do tell me the answer in the comment section below. Now, have uh, you ever wondered or are you wondering on the fact that why did India launch its own satellite on a foreign rocket that too on a foreign land? Why? when we ourselves occupy a place in the world space arena where we launch the rockets, we launch the satellites at a very low cost. Other countries come to us and help uh, take our help in launching their own satellites. Then why are we going to other country to launch our own satellite? What is the reason behind that? Probably the cost of launching this satellite from our rocket would be lesser in comparison to the cost that we are now wearing when we have launched it on the Erin 5 rocket of France company. That might be the first uh, reason. And second reason could be that it is by Tata Play. So this entire venture is being uh, funded by Tata Play itself because it is the satellite of Tata Play. Okay. So that 
could be the reason for which uh, new space india limited has gone to france and this is also going to strengthen india and france relationship now let's move into the details of this news so this organization has launched this uh, communication satellite for tata play and this satellite has been built by isro it is a 24 KU band communication satellite of course we do not understand what does this mean and we don't have to actually so this much is enough for you to know okay from your RBI Sadi Nawad and any other banking exams point of view and again the weight is not of our concern so we can skip that so the launch took place from the French Guiana which is a territory in the Latin America and from there the launch took place along with India's GSAT-24 satellite Malaysia had also launched its MESAT 3D communication satellite on the same rocket from the uh, in the same launch okay so this is also important do remember moving on to the next question which airport has become India's first airport to run entirely on a combination of hydro and solar power. So guys, we had Co Cochin International Airport, which is India's first solar airport. Now we have the first hybrid, uh, the first Indian airport that runs on hybrid renewable energy. Hybrid basically means the combination of two modes of renewable energy. So here we have hydro and solar. So which airport is this? It is guys Indra Gandhi International Airport in Delhi. Okay, so do remember. Now it is run by the Delhi International Airport Limited. And one more fact from this entire news is that uh, your Cochin International Airport in 2015 itself became the first airport in the world to run on this solar energy entirely. One more fact here is that the solar energy that this airport is getting is uh, from the solar panels installed on the rooftop of this airport's premises okay but the hydro energy that this airport is getting it is from the himachal pradesh based company okay so basically from himachal pradesh it is sourcing its hydro energy so this is another fact that you need to know the third question is which state has signed an MOU with Sub Subhikshika, one of the country's first vertically integrated multi-state cooperative society which promotes organic farming. So here uh, the right answer is Karnataka. So recently Karnataka government has signed two MOUs to strengthen women's self-help groups. Okay, So it is uh, an initiative towards women empowerment only. So these two MOUs are first with the IIM uh, Bangalore, um, yes, so, okay, there is a mistake in the content, I guess, so there are two MOUs, one is with the IIM Bangalore, which focuses on strengthening the economic activities of women self-help groups. And the second one is with Subhikshika that aims to strengthen the organic farming, okay. The focus is on uh, enhancing uh, the scope of organic farming in the state. That is all. There is nothing much to it. So don't, don't try to uh, know more about such news which are directly related to the states. Moving ahead, in how many states and union territories will the 75 BRO cafes will be established? So here guys, the right answer is option 8. In 12 states and union territories the border roads organization is going to establish 75 cafes now what are these cafes these cafes are basically being developed to promote tourism so they are go going to be the actual cafes where the tourists would get basic amenities in the border villages which is really hard to get in such uh, you can say harsh localities so there the BRO is going to develop 75 cafes and we all know that 75 is a crucial number because this is the 75th year of India's independence. So obviously it is going to be developed under Azadi Kamrat Mohotsa. And guys this is the list 
of the 12 states. Obviously, you don't have to memorize the list. But one thing is common, all of these are the border states. So there only the, uh, there only the BRO cafes will be established. And if you know the map very well, so I don't think that it would be hard for you to memorize the states as well, because these are the border states. Moving ahead, so uh, it seems a quite lengthy question, but at the same at the same time, it is very important because it is about the RBI's new regulation. So let's have a look at the question. Uh, which of the following statements is incorrect about the draft master direction on outsourcing of information technology services? So recently, RBI has released its master directions on the outsourcing of information technology. If you go into the depth of this draft notification or the entire news, you would find that there is nothing, nothing much complex in this entire news. It is just the obvious guidelines that RBI has now solidified in the form of a master direction. And remember one more thing that it is in the draft stage. Basically, it is the draft on which public comments have been invited by RBI as of now. Okay, so we don't know when will this draft be finalized. So we are uh, covering it in the draft stage itself. However, once it is finalized and it comes into the public arena, I will definitely cover it in detail for all of you. So now let's have a look at the statements. The first statement says, The regulated entities would be required to put in place a comprehensive board approved IT outsourcing policy. Regulated entities will not require prior approval from the central bank for outsourcing of IT and IT enabled services. All the re regulated entities will have to take due diligence in maintaining the quality standards and supervision. Regulated entities should set up a robust grievance redressal mechanism. So from the statements itself, you can see that they are very obvious in nature. So obviously the answer would be option E, all of them. So from the name itself, master direction on outsourcing of information technology and IT enabled services. So basically this draft notification delves into uh, the guidelines that allow the regulated entities which include your banks, your NBFCs and financial entities which are regulated by RBI to outsource their information technology services. Okay, for example, the suppose there is a bank which outsources its payment gateway to another company. Let's say the, let's take the example of HDFC Bank only, which has recently announced to outsource uh, to basically differentiate its core banking and its payment system. Okay, now suppose after differentiating its core banking with the payment system, if it outsources this entire payment system to another company, let's say Airtel Payments Bank. Now, the responsibility of handling all the payment services, digital payment services of HDFC Bank are now with the Airtel Payments Bank. So that is the basic idea of outsourcing the uh, IT enabled services. Now let's have a look at the uh, draft in detail. So banks, payment banks, cooperative banks, credit information companies, NBFCs and other regulated entities would be uh, now in a place to outsource their IT services. Earlier, they used to obtain the prior approval of RBI before outsourcing that service. But now RBI has given a free hand to these companies to outsource, okay, so that they can attain uh, efficiency in their operations. So what RBI is saying that you can outsource, that is fine, but you need to take due diligence it should not be the case that you are outsourcing the service, but the quality of the service has degraded. That should not happen. Otherwise, everything is fine with me. So that is what RBI is saying to these regulated entities. REs, that is regulated entities, should set up a robust grievance redressal mechanism because the responsibility of resolving the problems, the grievances of the consumers would lie on the banks itself or the regulated entities. For example, if you have done any payment 
through the hdfc uh, bank's application and that payment is uh, under default you are not able to process that payment so you will not go to the third party you will directly approach hdfc bank so that bank would be liable there next is that a risk management framework for outsourcing of it services would be uh, developed by the um, by the uh, regulated entity itself so guys i hope that you have understood that easy uh, master direction and remember that it is still in the draft stage so uh, the next question is what is the amount of loan given by world bank to support india's efforts to modernize rail freight and logistics infrastructure so recently one more loan has been announced by world bank to india and that loan amounts to 245 dollar million so do remember the amount because such loans are asked in the examination so the basic purpose is to modernize the rail freight and logistics infrastructure can any one of you tell me the complete electrification of railways target so when uh, by which year does the railways want uh, want to become completely electrified this is your question tell me in the comment section indian railways is the fourth largest rail network in the world having transported 1.2 billion tons of freight so i hope that you all know that majority of the the revenue that the indian railways earn comes from freight and indian railways is basically wanting to increase that revenue okay to increase its revenues in the freight cargo uh, in the cargo freight okay so this loan has been given by the international bank for reconstruction and development and the loan has a maturity of 22 years including a grace period of 7 years that is all about it bahut choti si news thi zyada kuch nahi hai moving ahead which organization has been acquired by pine labs so here guys option d setu is the right answer so pine labs is also a fintech and it has acquired uh, setu for 70 to 75 million dollars to strengthen its online payment and lending platform and here is more about setu so it was launched in 2018 by sahil kini and nikhil nikhil kumar and it is a technology service provider and this much information is just for your understanding guys nobody is going to ask you what setu used to do or what it is uh, doing right now okay the at the most the question would be framed out of these three keywords okay so do remember these keywords only i have just uh, provided you the facts for your understanding because once you develop understanding uh, there are higher chances that you can retain these facts as well for a longer period of time the next question is which company has introduced an ai adoption index and this is an important question so here uh, out of the five options nascom is the right answer so here guys this ai adoption index is basically okay so there was a disturbance uh, in the system give me a second okay so nascom has uh, has introduced this ai adoption index which basically assesses the adoption of artificial intelligence across different sectors in india for example how much ai uh, or basically what kind of applications are used in the banking sector in the insurance in the financial services etc etc that would be assessed through this ai adoption index more about this index is that these sectors the sectors we just talked about these banking financial services insurance which are collectively known as the bfsi sector consumer packaged goods retail healthcare and industrials uh, and automotive so uh, long story short sare hi sectors isme aa gaye hain so all these sectors contribute more than 60% of ai's potential value add of 450 to 500 billion dollars to the country's gdp basically if ai is adopted in these sectors then the value addition that ai would give in the gdp would be equivalent to 500 billion dollars by the year 2025 which is a huge contribution 
Now, apart from this, global investments in AI had more than doubled over the last couple of years, from 36 billion in 2020 to 77 billion in 2021. And remember, we are talking about global investments in AI. Uh, the ninth question is, who has been appointed as the new Director General of New Investigation Agency? So here, Dinkar Gupta uh, is the right answer. He was the former DGP of Punjab. Do remember this fact. When is the United Nations Public Services Day observed? So June 23 is the right answer. Now guys, the theme of the UN High Level Political Forum that was organized on this particular day, the Public Services Day, the theme of that is building back better, better from COVID-19, enhancing innovative partnership to meet the sustainable development goal. From India, uh, the award that UN gives every year for in the field of public service, that award has been uh, won by MOBUS initiative of Odisha government. Okay, So this is a public transportation initiative of the Odisha government and under that initiative and this initiative has got this award. Odisha is basically, Odisha has embarked on a journey to transform the face of the, of, of the state. And for that, it has adopted a 5P strategy. Can any one of you tell me what does 5P stand for in the comment section below? This is your question. And here, guys, the session ends. I hope that you have enjoyed the session. Thank you so much for watching it. If you have any comments, anything to share with me, you can in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys, for watching the video. Enjoy your day.